I'm John Davis. As Rob says, I've been with IPRIS for quite a long time. Uh, bumped into Rob and Kelvin at the BIS back in late 2012, and within weeks of them having founded it, I think, and thought, oh, this is exciting stuff. Uh, stuffy old BIS. I'm going to I'm going to join these new guys. It's been a bit of an interesting ride since then, but uh, <laughs> still here. Well, that's me. Um, uh, of all the details of all my post nominals, as the Americans put it. Um, but I do stuff for um, um, our two organizations, and Principium's my big job, and that's really published under both headings. I'm going to talk about hearts and minds. I'm going to talk about the, the pioneers. I'm then going to look at the, at the outward urge, which I, I put quite a lot of, of, of um, emphasis on um, in my view of this. Uh, look at the sol a solar system civilization, the possibility of such a thing in a, as a foundation stone for going into stellar. stellar. Then look at who will go to the stars. And then that phrase, the ultimate migration, uh, and I'll get to the, to the origin of that uh, as we come to it. Um, and uh, some of you who are not familiar with, with uh, um, this particular aspect of the work of the person con concerned who came up with it might be slightly surprised. And finally, some uh, inspiration. Um, we might inspire ourselves uh, towards uh, um, an interstellar future. So what I'm going to try and do is capture your imagination. And, and one of the things I'm going to be using is, is a, uh, um, a sprinkling of science fiction. Arguments in favour, I'll take them in, in, in the pull and push, in other words, what, it, what is drawing us to the stars and, and then um, um, what, what is, is um, propelling us to the stars. So we're, we're looking to find uh, uh, habitable worlds and life. We're looking to build upon our past achievements in space and, and in other uh, technologies. We want to become a more outward looking science society, perhaps. Certainly we can achieve scientific advancement. Perhaps if ETI exists, if we're not alone, then cultural inter interactions with, a, with another intelligence um, so may have a tremendous uh, benefits. Um, and the more abstract one of under understanding our, ourselves in the universe, our place. And the one I like best, the outward urge, and that's why I'm quoting Tennyson here. Uh, um, as he said in Ulysses, one equal temper of heroic hearts, made weak by time and fate, but strong in will to strive to seek to find and not to yield. Um, and my sentimental side uh, um, finds that appealing, but uh, maybe sentiment isn't enough. And of course, he was talking about Greek mythology, at least in principle. So, why should we? various uh, types of people engaged. So scientists, um, here we've got uh, an early picture of Darwin, uh, we've got Mendel, um, so Darwin the field man, Mendel the laboratory man, uh, uh, engineers, technologists, this is Bob Kigger, we're now with, with the change from the Great Eastern, and there's Ada Lovelace again, the first software engineer really, um, and uh, cultural creatives, I'm talking about science fiction writers, here's, here's uh, Jim Ballard again, and Kurt Vonnegut, um, so imagining different ways in which we might uh, exist uh, beyond Earth. Um, so how do we engage our species? Can we get them to think in terms of the outward, the outward urge? Um, here's a, a, a recreation of, of Magellan's ship, the first to sail around the world. 